Ladies and gentlemen, James Lane here. This is the 80th episode of the American Reveille podcast. 80! 80. That's a lot of episodes. Listen, guys, I'm going to do something that nobody else is doing. We're going to go deep diving today, ladies and gentlemen, deep diving. We're going to do H.R. 5, the Equality Act. I'm going to explain to you how they're going to kill all women's rights in this country. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to explain to you exactly what passed the House, not by talking about it, not by describing it in bullet points, but we're going to read it line by line. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to the extravaganza. It's not really an extravaganza. It's a long ass episode. That's right. Well, maybe not as long as the three hour one I did about Texas a while back. But this one, ladies and gentlemen, this one's all about H.R. 5, the act, ladies and gentlemen, the Equality Act, the act that basically puts all of the woke nonsense, the pronouns, the gender identity is this theory, this concept, ladies and gentlemen. And trust me, they're going to crucify me for this episode. Crucify me. They're going to call me a racist. They're going to call me a sexist. They're going to put me right up against the wall and hammer my hands to it. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm only offering you the truth because the truth is that we're in a free country, a free country that still recognizes everybody's uh, belief system, that still recognizes that there are two biological sexes. The issue is this. If they put this into place... All that legal uh, stuff goes nowhere. It goes bye bye, right? It goes bye bye. Seriously, all the legal jargon, everything that said that there's two biological sexes, everything that gives you the right to live your life the way you want to, everything that gives you the right to not worry about a dude taking a piss in the girl's bathroom next to your daughter. That's right. It goes bye bye. No more rights, no more protections for that. Instead, it creates an entire class of people. Not that people aren't entitled to live whatever life they want to live, but it, incre it creates this class of people, which is a fluid class, a class that has an advantage over all other people in this country because that class of people, all right, that class of people can decide whatever it is that they want to be on whatever given day they decide to identify as it. You see where I'm coming from? If Tuesday I want the rights of a woman, well, Tuesday I want the rights of a woman. If on Wednesday I want the rights of a man, on Wednesday I want the rights of a man. They have said time and time again, there's no number of genders. You can't put a number on it. You can't identify it. You can't put a name on it because it's whatever the individual person feels since we're a society of feelings now and not a society of facts. When they feel whatever way they feel, they get to define whatever it is they are, meaning they could become a shapeshifter. They could be whatever they want. And legally, that creates a world of hell for the citizenry of this country. Nobody's uh, for anybody getting hurt or discriminated against. What we're for is fairness and equality for all. This act takes away the freedoms from some to give it to others. And that isn't right in this country either. It isn't. All right, folks, I have to get it out. I have to say it. It's important. It's the truth. Not everybody's saying it like that. Some people say it better than me. Some people say it worse than me. Hopefully I articulated it right, but it is what it is. It's the truth. All right. This is a long document. It's going to say a lot of stuff that makes sense. And it's going to sneak in a lot of stuff that's real dirty and sneaky, ladies and gentlemen, real dirty and nasty designed to take away freedom. All right. Some of this is going to make you mad. Some of this is going to make you go, huh? All of this is going to piss off the left. I'll tell you that we're exposing their dirty little, uh, their dirty little game here, their dirty little secret. They're not about helping people. All right. They're not about helping anybody. All right. The elites in this country 
understand. I'm going to say this like every episode. It connects this way. For any topic we talk about, it connects to this stuff. There are elites on all sides of the aisles. Republican, Democrat, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's just a different class of people, people with hundreds of millions of dollars living in the gated communities. They don't want us infringing upon their lives. Donald Trump opened the window, opened the door. He showed us inside their dirty little world, ladies and gentlemen, and they are doing everything they can to patch the hole by pitting us against each other by taking young people that are confused. And there are some young people that aren't confused, but you have to admit there's a percentage that are confused. It's just statistics. It's math. Math isn't racist. All right. And I want you to remember that, by the way, a lot of these people think math is racist. They think all this stuff is right. You have to zoom out and look at the ridiculousness, uh, ridiculousness of it before you judge me. You really do. All right. They claim all of these things, but they're just playing you full of for a fool. All right. They don't go by our definitions. The left does not go by standard definitions anymore. So don't be played as a fool. Don't. Don't. You're smarter than that. You're smarter than that. And if you listen to this or if you watch this, depending on whether you're on Apple or whether you're on uh, Odyssey or Gab TV or YouTube or however you're watching this, however you decide to do it, you're going to learn something. All right. You're going to have a few laughs. You're going to be emotionally involved. We're going to go on this roller coaster together. We're going to finish it up with something to smile about, something to laugh about. We're going to take it home and then we're going to move forward to the next episode 81 coming out either tonight or tomorrow. So, guys, this is H.R. 5. All right. This is the Equality Act. Let's start reading. All right. An act to prohibit discrimination on the basis of sex. Gender identity, that's the key word, all right? That's the stuff that makes the woke culture an act in our freaking government, all right? Seriously, scary stuff. To prohibit discrimination on the basis of sex, gender identity, and sexual orientation, and for other purposes, all right? I, as an American, find this act to, in itself, in certain ways, be hate speech, all right. I feel oppressed looking at this. All right. I don't care what your leftist beliefs are. I don't consent to them. I don't believe in them. They do not exist to me and half of this country and probably half of your lefty party because they're too low information to know what's even going on. Plain and simple. All right. I don't consent to it. I don't believe in it. It's still a free country. Kick the bricks with that. All right. So you can call me out on it. You can ask for an apology all you like. I'm going to give you the finger. I'm going to tell you to go kick rocks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to read some stuff here. We're going to go through this. It's going to be a little bit uh, misleading. It's going to seem like, oh, well, of course, nobody should be. And of course, nobody should be discriminated against. But you'll see. We're going to pick out. We're going to pick out the pieces. All right. We're going to pick out the pieces of corn in the never mind. Let's just read. All right. This act can be cited as the Equality Act. Section two findings and purpose. Congress has found this. Now, this is the same Congress that can't find their own freaking head if it was shoved up their ass. Congress finds the following. Discrimination can occur on the basis of sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, pregnancy, childbirth, or a related medical condition of an individual, as well as because of sex-based stereotypes. Each of these factors alone can serve as the basis for discrimination and each is a form of sex discrimination right there in that line they're hoping you're a dummy and you don't catch gender identity right because nobody should be discriminated against because of uh, whether they're a male or female nobody should be discriminated against because of their orientation gay straight lesbian trans whatever right you shouldn't be we all can agree with that nobody should be discriminated against because they're pregnant or because they're having a baby or because they have a medical condition but they threw gender identity in there and gender identity is a fluid term that allows me to say i'm a friggin pineapple today so if you don't like the fact that I'm a pineapple, when this gets passed, just wait. Just wait till people start going to jail because you didn't respect King Pineapple. 
All right, King Pineapple right here, the juiciest pineapple in all the land, mofos. You don't respect the pineapple, you get the juice. I'm going to make a pina colada out of you. That's what's going to happen. I know that's ridiculous. I know it sounds silly. I know it's ridiculous. But that's that's what we're talking about when they say gender identity. It gets, trust me, we just started. All right, let's get back into reading. A single instance of discrimination may have more than one basis. For example, discrimination against a married same-sex couple could be based on the sex stereotype that marriage should only be between heterosexual couples, all right, which is a Christian Catholic belief, the sexual orientation of the two individuals and the couple or both. Discrimination against a pregnant lesbian could be based on her sex, her sexual orientation, her pregnancy, or on the basis of multiple factors. You wondered why they wouldn't open churches up, right? Read that line again. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer referred to as LGBTQ, and maybe the Congress will get in trouble because they're not woke enough. I thought there was a bunch more alphabet letters. People commonly experience discrimination in securing access to public accommodations, including restaurants, senior centers, stores, places or establishments that provide entertainment, health care facilities, shelters, government offices, youth service providers, including adoption and foster care providers and transportation. Forms of discrimination include the exclusion and denial of entry, unequal or unfair treatment, harassment, and violence. This discrimination prevents the full participation of LGBTQ people in society and disrupts the free flow of commerce. Let's talk about that. All right. Let's talk about that for a second. Nobody should ever have any violence done to them. Nobody should be discriminated against. OK, nobody should be uh, uh, made to not be allowed to pay for a place to live if they have the means. Right. Nobody should be allowed to to hurt somebody because of their sexual orientation or how they look and all of that stuff. They shouldn't. They shouldn't. That's wrong. And we believe that it's wrong. But here's the thing. They lump all of this stuff in here, right? They're lumping this in here. They're saying they commonly experience discrimination and securing access and da 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 Okay, they shouldn't, right? But at the same time, I shouldn't be made to bend my rights, all right? This is what's happening, and this is what they're not putting in here because this sentence isn't wrong or this paragraph, this little section here, number three, it's not a bad thing. Most of us listening that aren't super religious or anything, we agree people should be left to, to live their lives, right? That's the whole part of being a libertarian or being a conservative or Republican. Hey, man, you do you. I do me. Don't come on my lawn. I won't come on your lawn. Merry Christmas, right? But a lot of folks, not everybody in the LGBT community, probably not even the majority, but these militant folks, and a lot of them are saying they're allies that take advantage of people that, that lead these things, they want more pie. All right. We're all fine with actual equality. All right. But what these folks want, all right, the Democrats, what they want is an entire new group of voters, all right? They're pandering. They're pandering to people, and they're going to hurt these people all for political purposes, all right? A lot of folks in these communities, we all have a lot more in common than we might actually believe. The problem is that when you brainwash generations, when you change definitions and words, when you make people believe they're more entitled than, than they are, listen, you've got the most entitled people on the planet telling other people to check their privilege. Shove that up your ass, right? It's not across the board. Nobody has a problem with LGBT folks. This is 2021. Nobody has a problem with people living their lives and being happy. What we have a problem with is you guys punishing everybody else. And I'm not saying you guys referring to LGBTQ. I'm saying you guys referring to the entirety of the left, the Democrat Party and all the extremists on the left. You guys don't just want fairness. You want to hurt us. And that's the problem. That's the line in the sand. And that's the point of this bill to permanently hurt 
all of the patriots in this country to hurt America and Americans and change the face of this country forever. It's not about helping people. It's about hurting people for power. Boom. We're already at this dramatic interval and we're on line three. We're screwed. This is going to be a while. <laughs> Four. Women have also faced discrimination in many establishments, such as stores, restaurants, places or establishments that provide other goods or services, such as entertainment or transportation, including sexual harassment, different pricing for substantially similar products and services, and denial of service because they're pregnant or breastfeeding. Hey, we can agree. That's not good. Nobody likes that. Women shouldn't be discriminated against, right? They lump women into this category. Not... Not to help women, it's to hurt women, because you'll see when they slide some things in here later, they actually take rights away from women, all right? And in their socialist utopia, their Democrat socialist dream, people should voluntarily give, give, just give for the greater good. So this isn't a problem to the people who wrote this. Most women who find out the truth are on, are, or are on the tail end or on the receiving end of negative treatment because of things, uh, uh, transgender uh, uh, sports, different things like that, entering women's sports. Thing. Trust me, most women are against this. Trust me. Anyway, many employers, this is number five, already and continue to take proactive steps beyond those required by states and localities to ensure they are fostering positive and respectful cultures for all employees. Many places of public accommodation also recognize the economic imperative to offer goods and services to many consumers as possible. See, this is a problem because, again, gender identity has been implanted into this. So if I decide I'm a pineapple in the office on Friday. It's Hawaiian Fridays, ladies and gentlemen. It's Hawaiian Fridays. And I'm at a, a, a professional law firm, a suit and tie, and I come in in my freaking pineapple pajamas with a cut-off pineapple sprout glued to my bald head. It's discriminatory for my boss to send me home to fire me. That's what's going to happen. That's the problem. I know I'm being extreme with some examples, right? But they want to create a world where you could just do and be and say whatever the hell you want. And the way they get away with it is because they say that words are now violence. Words are now violence. It hurts people to say things. When did we become a country of pansies, ladies and gentlemen? When did we become so soft? When did we learn to become failures? We're supposed to be winners. This is the United States of America. Words can hurt people, right? Right? But you can recover. You can grow up. You can get stronger. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt me. Watch what happens when this country becomes a country be uh, completely full of weak people. How many years before China invades, before Russia invades, before Iran nukes us, before this country falls? All right. When these leftists spew, well, in other cultures, in Western culture, we do this horrible stuff. But in other cultures, those other cultures you refer to in the Middle East and other places, they kill gay, lesbian, transgender folks. They murder them. They murder them. They torture them in the streets. Right. They hurt people in a lot of these other cultures. Right. You are living in a dream world. You say we don't understand. We exactly know where you're coming from. And you are wrong, lefties. You're wrong. And the science proves it. The problem is, is no one's paying attention to the silence or the science. We are a society of feelings, plain and simple, a society of feelings. All right. Look. Regular and ongoing discrimination against LGBTQ people as well as women in accessing public accommodations contributes to negative social and economic outcomes in the case of public accommodations operated by state and local governments, abridges individuals' constitutional rights. Look, again, LGBTQ people and women shouldn't have a problem getting an apartment. You shouldn't have a problem ordering an ice cream. You shouldn't have a problem buying a house, whatever. We get that. We get that. But again, that is not the point of this. They have the agenda of this hidden deep within 
this narrative, this story. We're just here to protect these people. But when you throw again a theory, gender identity is a theory. Listen, sex is a fact. Sexual orientation is a fact. Pregnancy is a fact. Childbirth is a fact. Medical conditions are fact. Gender identity is Puff the Magic Dragon, make-believe, ho-ho, Santa Claus bullshit. Prove me wrong, all right? Your feelings are not science. If you believe in God and you're a Democrat, you are wrong. Plain and simple. You are wrong. Number seven, the discredited practice known as conversion therapy is a form of discrimination that harms LGBTQ people by under, uh, undermining individuals' sense of self-worth, uh, self worth, increasing suicide ideation and substance abuse, exasperating family conflict, contributing to second-class status. Look, conversion therapy, nobody really agrees with that. We think it's a bad thing, right? You need to let things naturally go through. If a young person gets older or whatever and still feels that way, that's their personal choice, right? But the problem is when they talk about suicide rates and different things like that, they never take into account the folks that went along with something that felt a certain way, got uh, hormone changes, got things done to them, got their, their, their breasts cut off, all those things when they were teenagers or younger, and now they're in their 20s, their brains have changed, they feel different, they feel like a woman or feel feel like a man. They don't look like one anymore. And they kill themselves. Oh, but when you talk about suicide, you know what a lefty does? They go, I don't understand. You have too much privilege. You shouldn't be able to bring that up. One thing doesn't have anything to do with it. You're saying that and it's violence. We shouldn't have to think. It hurts my head to think about that. I don't like thinking about bad things. Naughty thoughts. That's what lefties do. They don't actually have. When we were growing up, right? My generation. I'm, I know I'm going off subject again. But I'm not really. We saw a whole generation behind us getting participation trophies, right? Thanks. Whoever was into that, whoever did that one, this is what we're dealing with because of that. All right. Great job. Great job, guys. I mean, there's look, it's obviously I'm making a generalization. There's all kinds of things that played into this from colleges and different places and stuff. Theories that go back decades of socialist infiltration, all kinds of crap. All right. But honestly, you weak ass little bitches, you weak ass little bitches. And now we're dealing with this and nobody knows how to handle it because they're like little kids. Listen, the left is like a bunch of little brats. They're little kids. They're throwing tantrums. They're doing things, throwing things, sneaking things in. And we need to handle little kids like they need to be handled. All right. Plain and simple. All right. Eight, both LGBT people, LGBTQ people and women face widespread discrimination in employment and various services, including by entities that receive federal finance assistance. Such discrimination is particularly troubling and inappropriate for programs and services funded wholly or in part by the federal government. B undermines national progress towards equal treatment, regardless of sex, sexual orientation or gender identity. And C is inconsistent with constitutional principle of equal protection under the 14th amendment. This is more BS. It talks about things funded by federal government. We could talk all about planned parenthood, planned parenthood. I think, what was it? 10 to 13% of people who use planned parenthood are, uh, are, are, are doing it for a medical purpose or because of a, a rape or deformity or something like a medical condition that could hurt the, the, the mother or, or something. The rest is unplanned pregnancies. That's 600,000 dead babies a year for birth control because people didn't want to use a condom. All right. That's what our government pays for, ladies and gentlemen. But they're saying that LGBTQ people and women face widespread discrimination. Hey, you're gay. That's your thing. You're a lesbian. You're whatever. You should be able to get a job doing whatever. All right. There are certain military functions uh, like Navy SEALs where I think that might be an issue. Hey, we'll see where things go. All right. That's not my business. That's not my expertise. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, what they're talking about again is gender identity. All right. That's what's been injected into this. The word gender identity, this made up concept. It's a theory. All right. It's not legitimate. It's not legitimate just because a bunch of kids feel, I feel this way. Doesn't make it true. All right. You know, they spent a lot of years saying the TV was the idiot box until they invented the real idiot box. Plain and simple, the real idiot box. 
I really think it's helped craft this participation trophy generation and then the generation of kids after that. All right. You know, I've seen a lot of BLM protests, a lot of gay and trans protests. It always just seems like privileged, well off white kids. I don't see a lot of diversity. All right. I'm sure it exists. There's some. But, you know, it's really, really funny how the cards fall, ladies and gentlemen, it just is. Federal courts have widely recognized that in enacting the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Congress validly invoked its powers under the Fourth Amendment to provide a full range of remedies in response to persistent, widespread, and per pervasive discrimination by both private and government actors. Now they're throwing this into the Civil Rights Act, see? Discrimination by state and local governments on the basis of sexual orientation, or gender identity. Again, problem. I shouldn't be, th th think, just think about the paperwork. If on Monday you're a dude and on Wednesday you're a chick, all right, and they're gonna go, oh, you said dude or chick, that's violent, that's offensive, you should use shim, sher, ver, there, there, ziz, zer, zin. I don't believe in your theory, and it's America, and I'm allowed to not believe in you. I don't believe in fairies. I don't believe in fairies, and I'm not gonna clap, all right? And that joke that I just said, that was talking about Tinkerbell, all right? Don't be a freaking bigot, plain and simple. Listen, listen, discrimination by state and local government on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. Gender identity, guys. You can't put an unproven concept into legislation. Individuals who are LGBTQ are perceived to be LGBTQ. There's a key word. Always be careful with that one. Perceived. That's a very loose legal term, have been subjected to a history of a pattern of persistent, widespread, and pervasive discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity by both the private sector, federal, state, and local government actors, including employment, housing, and public accommodations, and in programs and activities receiving federal financial assistance. An explicit and comprehensive national solution is needed to address such discrimination, which has sometimes resulted in violence or death, including the full range of remedies under the Civil Rights Act of 1964. See, they lump all of that in there. They don't mention the gender identity. They don't mention all of the, the, the different things in such heaviness, right? They put it in there. They say gender identity in one little blurb, right? But they talk about all of this discrimination and torture and death and da 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 da, -da and people go, oh my God, they do need civil rights protection. But again, again, they're not covering the little the little things that they've stuck in there, the little pieces of fruit that they stuck in there that are rotten, that aren't there to help anybody. They're there to help themselves while hurting other people. Numerous provisions of federal law expressly doubt or prohibit discrimination on the basis of sex and federal agencies and courts have correctly interpreted these prohibitions are uh, prohibitions on sex discrimination to include discrimination based on sexual orientation, gender identity, and sex stereotypes. In particular, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission interpreted Title Seven of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and Macy v. Holder, Baldwin v. Fox, and Lusardi v. McHugh. It's funny how when we quote court cases, we're always wrong. The absence of explicit pro, uh, prohibitions of discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity under federal statutory, uh, statutory law has created uncertainty for employers and other entities covered by federal non-discrimination laws and caused unnecessary hardships for LGBTQ individuals. Listen, nobody is against discussing the sexual orientation side, but gender identity is off the table for at least 100 million plus Americans in this country, all right? In this country, we believe in liberty. We believe that your rights end where my rights begin and vice versa, all right? This is something very different from slavery, from the, the, the struggle of African Americans. And so what they've done is then they take the transgender struggle and African Americans, they put them together and then they say transgender women of color or, or transgenders of color who, you know what I mean? And they say they're the most discriminated again because they've like created a point system almost for discrimination, right? When's the social score point system come in? 
this stuff is outrageous. It's absolutely outrageous. It's outrageous. It goes against my belief system and many of yours. You cannot be prejudiced against me and my belief system just because you believe in your own belief system. You have the right to believe in this crap, but I have the right to say that it's horseshit. Plain and simple. Welcome to America. I know you guys hate it, and I'm talking to the lefties. I know you hate it. Sorry, we're still America. We're still the United States, at least until you uh, complete your rabid takeover. Listen, numerous provisions of federal law. We talked about that. The absence of explicit prohibitions. We talked about that. The unnecessary hardships for LGBTQ. LGBTQ people often face discrimination when seeking to rent or purchase housing, as well as in every other aspect of obtaining, maintaining housing. LGBTQ people and same-sex relationships are often discriminated against when two names associated with one gender appear on a housing application. And transgender people often encounter discrimination when credit checks or inquiries reveal a former name. Hey, how does a credit check um, discriminate against you when 99% of them are done online now. You can't see anything. But anyway, anyway, listen, people do get discriminated against. It's wrong, right? But it's not about, you know, LBGD, uh, uh, LGBTQ folks being discriminated against. That's not what this is about at all. All right. That's not what this is about at all, because the hidden terms, the gender identity term is just shoved in there. All right. They're using LGBTQ as a capsule for gender identity. All right. Not everybody from those communities identify and believe in that theory and how it goes. All right. This is a very young thing that's happening. And you can't take a young theory that's not proven, that's causing more bad than good. All right. Into law. You can't. It doesn't work like that. All right. It doesn't work like that. 15 national surveys, including a study commissioned by the Department of Housing and Urban Development, show that housing discrimination against LGBTQ people is very prevalent. For instance, when same sex couples inquire about housing that's available for rent, they're less likely to receive positive responses from landlords. A national matched pair testing investigation found that nearly one half of same sex couples face adverse differential treatment when seeking elder housing. And according to other studies, transgender people have half the home ownership, all right, of non transgender people, and about one in five transgender people experience homelessness. There's plenty of other uh, statistics as well, all right? That's a choice. I'm sorry. That's a choice for a lot of people. For a certain percentage of people, it's not a choice, all right? I can agree with that. There are people born that way, but for a lot of people, it's a choice too. All right. And it creates an unfair advantage because anybody can then say, I'm transgender. I am this. I am that. That's what the trans, the, the gender identity part, right? We don't argue too much about gay, lesbian, transgender, things like that, that people shouldn't be subjected to discrimination, right? It's the gender identity part. Because if a normal person uh, uh, that's walking around every day, whether that normal person is gay, straight, works, doesn't work, whatever, decides that there's something else the next day for some sort of financial advantage or for some sort of power advantage, gender identity in these words, allow that person to take advantage of people and take advantage of the system. You have to have a defined thing and gender identity isn't defined. They cannot tell you with a straight face how many genders there are, because according to gender identity, there's an infinite number of genders that cannot become law. That is not real. That is a fantasy. Again, I do not believe in fairies. All right. I don't. I don't at all. All right. I'd like to see one if they're real. I really, really would. As a result of the absence of explicit prohibitions against discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity, credit applicants who are LGBTQ or perceived have unequal opportunities to establish credit. Hey, I grew up poor as shit. All right. I still don't own a house. I still don't own a house. I'm still renting. Where's my, pre what do you mean? There's plenty of people. How about this? How about classes of people with different amounts of money in this country that you want to solve with equity? How about making more competition, more opportunity for people instead of putting them in a box, instead of saying that these people are live through hardships and have it bad and need help and blah, 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 blah. You baby everybody, you put everybody in a category, and then all of a sudden they have nothing to strive for. And that's what they're doing.
That's what they're doing so that they can retain control. The elites just want to retain control. This wasn't drafted by the LGBT community. This was drafted by wealthy white people. This was drafted by wealthy white people. As a result of the absence of explicit prohibitions of a federal law, all right, here's the problem, right? I should be able to rent to whoever I want to rent to if I am a landlord, right? If a couple comes in that's transgender, but that's not what I care about. Let's just say they're young and they look like they're going to party and screw up my rental, right? And smoke in there and damage the place. All they got to do is say they're being discriminatory. We're transgenders, right? And they take advantage. And then I have no choice. And then I have to pay for that. All right. I know the left says, good, you should pay for that. Screw off. That's not how business works. This is still the United States of America. So no, no, you don't get to identify as anything. Numerous studies demonstrate LGBTQ people, especially transgender people, are economically disadvantaged at a higher rate and risk for poverty compared with other groups of people. For example, older women and same sex couples have twice the poverty rate of older different sex couples. You know, I want to know how many people they tested. I want to know how many people that uh, admitted to this, how they got those numbers. Trust me. All right. You can skew anything to anything. And even if it's true, even if it's not true. All right. Discrimination has not the majority to do with it. There are people in this world that are horrible, that discriminate against people. Those people shouldn't be allowed to do that. But at the same time, there are a lot of people that use these things as a crutch. There are. All right. There are hate on me all you want. I don't care. All right. Hate me because you ain't me, baby. Hate me. Hate me. Hate me. Hate me because you ain't me. The right to an impartial jury of one's peers and the reciprocal right to jury service are fundamental to the free and democratic systems of justice in the United States and are based on the Bill of Rights. There is, however, an unfortunate and long documented history in the U.S. of attorneys discriminating against LGBTQ individuals or those perceived to be LGBTQ and jury selection failure to bar uh peremptory challenges based on the actual or perceived sexual orientation or gender identity of an individual not only erodes a fundamental right duty and obligation of being a citizen of the United States, but unfairly creates a second class of citizenship for LGBTQ victims, witnesses, plaintiffs, uh, plaintiffs and defendants. It does not. That's not what's happening. They're using situations that have happened that are wrong and bad, but at the same time, They've injected gender identity into this, which makes this a fluid thing. It makes it so anybody can be a part of that. Anybody at all. All right. If I'm going to court tomorrow, I think tomorrow I'll identify. All right. Because it's based on feelings. It's all based on how you feel. Remember, so I identify as whatever I need to identify to get my butt from going to jail. All right. Numerous studies document the shortage of qualified and available homes for the 437,000 youth in the child welfare system and the negative outcomes for the many youth who live in group care as opposed to a loving home or who age out with a permanent family. You know something? I came from a broken home. All right. I have two half sisters that went through the foster care uh, system. We don't talk. They're full lefty whatever's from what I know. You know, they don't want anything to do with me. That's fine. I never knew them anyway. Listen, people go through crap. This isn't a perfect world. And you make what you make of this world. You work hard. You bust your butt. You can be something. You can overcome anything. I went through a hell of a bad childhood. I overcame it. And that's not because of privilege. All right. My hands are still calloused and pain and hurting from all the work I've done over the years to get to this little point, this little slice of paradise that I'm at. All right. Some people start in different places. I don't believe in equity. Equity is a socialist concept. Equity is BS. It's fake and it doesn't exist. Equity leads to the destruction of country and the genocide of people. We will not have it. LGBTQ people, they shouldn't be discriminated against, but you shouldn't take my right away to be able to rent to whoever I want to, to be able to bake a cake for whoever I want to, whether I don't want to serve them because they have bad breath or whether I don't want to serve them because I don't like their attitude or however. It's my right, my business, right? That's not discrimination. That's not. 
I'm sorry. People have different beliefs in this country and you need to respect my belief and I'll respect your belief. But it can't be shoved down people's throats. You can't force things down people's throats. And that's what this is doing with gender identity. Again, most people, 99.9% .9 of people aren't going to have a problem with gay, lesbian, transgender people. All right. Maybe if they're assholes about it, just like there's assholes that aren't transgender that shove their accomplishments or whatever down other people's throats. Right. PhDs that uh, make you call them doctor. Right. Like I'm going to be a business PhD. If I made you call me a doctor, I'd be a douchebag. Right. If you're like that in that community, you're an asshole has nothing to do with your orientation. Right. Some people are assholes and some people don't want to serve assholes and they should have the right to not service an asshole. Plain and simple. Numerous studies document the shortage of qualified and available homes. Oh, and I mean, I guess that was referring to the uh, paragraph before that, because I know they're talking about juries and the justice system and everything like that. But again, how do you define anything if you can't put a number on genders? That's the problem with gender identity. Numerous studies document the shortage of qualified and available homes for the 437,000 youth in the child welfare system, right? We talked about that. We talked about homes for foster children and adoptive families, things that are happening to these kids. It's a horrible system. We need to revisit our entire foster care system, in my opinion. We need to revisit our entire education system all right the problem all right with kids in this system has nothing to do with discrimination it has to do with a broken welfare system right that is basically giving a free ride to families who then do that the, they take these kids in for money and then they take advantage of these kids right? They don't provide them with the proper things. There aren't perfect foster. There's good foster families out there, but there are horrible foster families. And then there are horrible foster facilities where people are subjected to abuse, where people are subjected to neglect and discrimination. And if they're LGBTQ, it's much worse in the child welfare system. So why are we doing this? Why aren't we completely reforming our child welfare system? No. That's not what they want. That would be a solution. It wouldn't lead to a problem later on. This, this piece of work, this fake Equality Act, this leads to further problems. LGBTQ youths are overrepresented in the foster care system by at least a factor of two and report twice the rate of poor treatment while in care compared to their non-LGBTQ counterparts. You know, kids displaced and going through this stuff can be very confused. It's a real emotional time for people like this. You cannot... Take a 14 year old at their word when they say that they feel gay or transgender or lesbian because they need to sit in that. They need to try feel what they feel and grow into it. And if they still feel like that as they grow into an adult, then that's their right. That's their choice. But man, if you think back to when you were 14 and if you think that you were smart back then and you're just as smart now then you're an idiot. We shouldn't have this conversation. You're probably the person writing the bad review against me or freaking saying nasty stuff on freaking social media about me. I don't really care. I don't agree with all this stuff. LGBTQ youth in foster care of a higher average number of placements, higher likelihood of living in a group home and higher rates of hospitalization for emotional reasons and juvenile justice involvement than their non LGBTQ peers because of a high level of bias and discrimination that they face and the difficulty of finding affirming foster placements. Or maybe it's because they're not getting the psychological treatment they require after going through a hellish environment and a traumatic experience experience that put them in foster care in the first place. How about that? Some are born into it, but many just end up there and feel empty and abandoned and alone, having their entire family snatched away from them. I have a lot of experience with having family screw you or not even be there. All right. All right. I did not grow up in that loving middle class life. I grew up practically on the streets for a lot of it. All right. So screw off. You don't have the right to tell people what their privilege is or how they should feel or what's the truth in their world. Kids going through horrible stuff need to be taken care of, whether they're LGBTQ, whether they're straight, whether they're whatever, whatever they think they are. All right. That's a fact, Jack. It's a fact. All right. But. But they are using these kids in this as a tool to get gender identity through. This is not made to protect these children. It's not. So I know you're going to say I'm a racist or I'm biased or I'm this or I'm that, but I'm all about protecting all of these children. 
All right. But I'm sorry if you're not going to give them stable households and you're not going to give them a stable life and you're not going to give them the treatment they need and you're going to allow them to think they're a cucumber for their whole life. Well, I'm sorry, but when somebody wakes up at 26 and thinks they're a cucumber, they sometimes end up they sometimes end up homeless. I don't know what to tell you. All right. You can't save everybody, but you can save a lot of people by doing things that actually are there to help them and not using them as a political tool as they are in this bill. Purpose. It's the purpose of this act. Sorry, act, not bill to expand as well as clarify, confirm and create greater consistency in the protections and remedies against discrimination on the basis of all covered characteristics and to provide guidance and notice to individuals, organizations, corporations and agencies regarding their obligations under the law. Now, I know I shred this. I really shredded this. I went through this. I talked a lot of crap. All right. Maybe in some of this, I was a little harsh. Even it doesn't sound so terrible. If you just take the word gender identity out, everything is fine. It's all scientific, makes sense, right? It's not that horrible. People shouldn't be discriminated against regardless of anything. And nobody wants to see anybody hurt or have anything violent done against them. God forbid. God forbid. Plain and simple. God forbid. But they use this sob story up here, a very true sob story for some people, you know, to sell what they're going to sell us as we go down through this bill. All right. They're going to put down a bunch of regulations and little things they're going to go look through. see here, uh, desegregation of public education and federal funding and employment. And they're going to go and they're trying to amend these different parts. All right. They're trying to amend these different parts of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. All right. And inject this stuff into it. And you'll see Right. You'll see exactly while I go through this, how they've disguised their dirty deeds in what seems like something good. All right. I'm serious. You'll see it. It's real, real dirty. And it starts here in Section three, public accommodations. So remember, when you zoom out on this and look at it, uh, think about something psychologically. They're using the, the top of this bill to explain all these discriminations right, to sell what's on the bottom of this bill. And they're going to be amending the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Okay. And by even seeing the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and some of the wording, it seems like important stuff, because it is important stuff for a lot of folks in the minority communities. All right. So that's another kind of pill, you know, a spoonful of sugar to make the medicine go down, as you would call it, the proverbial medicine. All right. So this, like I said, Section three, public accommodations, a prohibition on discrimination or segregation in public accommodations. Section 201 of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 is amended. All right. Hey, nobody uh, wants to to see segregation at all, even though that seems like that's actually what the left wants, since they're making so many groups out of people. One in subsection A, by inserting sex to include orientation and gender identity before or national origin. And in subsection B, paragraph three, by striking stadium and all that follows and inserting stadium or other place of or establishment that provides exhibition, entertainment, recreation, exercise, amusement, public gathering, or public display. And what they're saying is there's probably a line in there that just says the word stadium. And now they want to increase that you can't do anything against anybody who identifies as anything they want to identify as across a full spectrum of those places, right? Amusement, exercise, recreation, entertainment, all that stuff. All right. Uh, redesignating a paragraph. We're going to be going through this part a little speedier because some of it's just pointing to paragraph three or pointing to paragraph two by inserting after paragraph three, the following any establishment that provides a good service or program, including a store, shopping center, online retailer or service provider, salon, bank, gas station, food bank service or care center, shelter, travel agency or funeral parlor or establishment that provides health care, accounting, or legal services. All right, cool. I own a funeral parlor, and you fill out a job application, and you say, I identify as a unicorn, and you wear a unicorn onesie with a unicorn horn, 
and a rainbow unicorn sparkly outfit. And every 10 minutes you go and you take a shit on the floor because you say it's made of freaking rainbow sparkles because you're a magical unicorn. I say, listen, I can't have you running the front desk of my funeral parlor. People have died. Their families are going to see you in your ridiculous unicorn costume. You're going to be neighing. You're going to be shitting on the floor. This place already smells like dead bodies. It doesn't need to smell like your shit. Why? Why? Get the hell out. You can't apply for a job here, you sick fuck. And you know what's going to happen? They're going to call the police and they're going to come arrest you and shut down your funeral parlor because you didn't hire Puff the Magic Unicorn to shit on the front desk. All right. Yeah, I know. A little vulgar. Whatever. This stuff pisses me off. They don't ever look at the ramifications. They don't ever look at it. Nobody should be discriminated against again uh, for sex. They could put sexual orientation there. If you are a woman, you shouldn't be discriminated against for anything or a man or anything like that. I agree with that. We agree with sexual orientation. Why do you think that comes before gender identity? You put sexual orientation psychologically before gender identity. It makes gender identity an easier subconscious pill to swallow, ladies and gentlemen. That is what that is. It is garbage bull and horse patootie. Any train service, bus service, car service, taxi service, airline service, station depot, or other place of establishment that provides transportation service. Listen, if I own my own taxi, right? And you are a, 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 a part of the LGBT community, right? And you happen to be coming from something that covered you in glitter, right? I'm not, listen, some people are into glitter. And a cab driver, I own a cab, and I'm like, I don't want you in my cab. You smell like alcohol, and you're going to get this glitter all over my car. It's going to take me forever to clean it. You can call the cops and say I'm discriminating against you. For because you freaking identified as a sparkle bug that night. Screw off. I should not be able to deny service to you because of the color of your skin. All right? I shouldn't. And that is wrong and that is illegal. But these lefties, they've gone beyond that. They don't care about skin color anymore. It's about thought process. It's about respecting an individual's right to believe that they're a butterfly. And that is not reality. It's not the real world, ladies and gentlemen, and our country will be heading for a brick wall if we allow that to be allowed. All right. Allow that to be allowed. That's kind of redundant, but allow that to continue evolving. How about that? Prohibition on discrimination or segregation under law. Section 202 is amended by inserting sex, including sexual orientation and gender identity before or national origin rule of construction title two is amended by adding the following at the end a reference in this title to an establishment shall be construed to include an individual whose operations affect commerce and who is a provider of goods, service and program and shall not be construed or be limited by physical facility or place what they're saying is that if you have an online business right if i have a conservative company that does not deal with les uh, 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 lefties, right? I'm a conservative company, all right? That's against our religion. That's against our beliefs. But this will force us, even if it's an online company, to serve those patrons and to employ those patrons. You can no longer have a conservative company after that, ladies and gentlemen. This right there is to kill the right. Plain and simple. There is nothing fair. There's nothing about equality. It's about creating equality, some form of their fantasized equality for an unlimited amount of identities by taking that equality away from people, ladies and gentlemen, people like you and me, people like you and me definitions all right desegregation of public education they're throwing this in there the the sexual orientation and gender identity public education all right civil actions by the attorney general it's amended all right by inserting gender identity this changes everything law right there public education it changes attorney general stuff it changes classification and assignment it's amended sexual orientation which is fine but then gender identity but then gender 
identity. All right. And then they're amending the 1964 Civil Rights Act here uh, by including uh, this is just Section 601. So federal funding will then go to gender identity. So this is for federal funding. Section 7, employment. All right. Rules of construction. Section 1106 shall apply to this title for the purpose of application of reference to the section to an un unlawful practice and shall be considered to be a reference to an unlawful employment practice. And these will now become unlawful employment practices. Striking sex and including sex to include orientation and gender identity. All right. Crazy. Striking sex and placing in gender identity again from the subsections, from all the sections, from enterprise. By taking out the word enterprise and inserting enterprise, if in a situation in which sex is a bona fide occupational qualification, individuals are recognized as qualified in accordance with their gender identity. If you have a job that requires you to be a 300 pound man because you're doing heavy manual labor and a 10 pound woman comes in and says, I identify as a 300 pound man. You have to hire her. Or you're discriminating. Did you read that? Listen, when they're talking about enterprise, right? They're expecting nobody to be able to go back. Listen, pull up the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and go compare it to this, all right? If I had a producer in six hours, I would do that with you, all right? And if you really want to see more of that and you want to see me bring that in, just email me, jameslane at americanrevely.com. Send a contact form over from americanrevely.com or just leave it in the comment section below. I'll see what I can do for you. But the problem... All right. The problem is by saying if an enterprise, if a company requires that a certain gender is used for a job, right? Right. If uh, if 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 the strip club for men says that only women can work there, right, because all of the patrons are men and only want to see women. If the man, if the bouncer, if the doorman, if the 300 pound bald doorman that beats people up for a living at the strip club says, I want to dance on Wednesday nights, you got to let him dance on Wednesday nights. You got to hire him as a stripper because on Wednesday nights, man, baby, he identifies as a sexy 120 pound redhead. Mm, mm, mm. Harry, you are one hot bouncer on the pole. What? He can't work the pole. Well, I guess the government's going to come shut down your strip club, aren't they? Other unlawful employment practices. Practices. Section 704 of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 is amended. They're placing gender identity in there. Uh, same with employment. If sex is a bona fide occupational qualification, they have to employ them with that person's gender identity. Again, nothing about if they change it, what they're going to do, anything like that. This mentions no solutions. It just becomes this blanket document that's going to lead to bazillions of problems in court. All right. There is no actual definition of gender identity. There's no real definition of gender identity. Define it for me. Prove me wrong. It's garbage. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Employment by federal government. All right. Gender identity in there as well. Employee rights of 1991. All right. They're putting gender, uh, gender rights or gender identity, excuse me, in there as well. Again, if I identify as this microphone, that's my gender identity. All right. This microphone has the gender of a microphone. I just made up a gender called microphone and that's my gender. That's how ridiculous this is. I'm serious. That's literally how simple it is. And if you say this, they'll call you a racist, say you're a bigot and tell you that you're being violent against them because they don't want to hear the truth because their opinion needs to be heard by everybody because they say their opinion opinion is fact, but in their bubble, they don't need to listen to anybody else. This is not equality. This is not fairness. This is a hostile takeover. Ladies and gentlemen, rules of construction and claims 1101, that's section 1106, section 1107 of the Civil Rights Act shall apply to this title, uh, except for that purposes of that applicant, a reference in that section 1106 to race, color, religion, sex, including gender identity, shall be considered to be a reference to race, color, religion, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, national or origin, age, or disability. Again, I, you can't throw that in there like that, all right? Because if I'm in a wheelchair and I can hurt myself, I cannot go work on a ship as a deckhand. This makes it so that that's discrimination, 
All right. If your 90 year old mother wants to become a truck driver, I cannot discriminate against her if she tries to become a truck driver. Oh, my gosh. Again, I'm going to get torn up for this. I know I am. I know I am, but I don't care. It's the truth. And you need to hear it. You need to hear the truth. Plain and simple. Plain and simple, excuse me. The Civil Service Reform Act of 1978. All right. Chapter five or chapter 23, Title five. I'm not sure what that is. We can go through all those separately in other episodes if you really want me to. Like I said, uh, put it in the comment section below. But again, they're replacing everything. Gender identity, gender identity, gender identity right here. Inter uh, uh, rules of construction and claims. They're putting another one in there, changing race, sex, religion, and color to race, color, religion, sex, gender identity, sexual orientation, national origin, age, a handicapping condition, marital status, or political affiliation, right? Here's the problem, though. If they say, right, that Republicans are terrorists, that's not a political affiliation anymore. So that doesn't matter that that's in there. What if I have a Republican company, <clears throat> which I do? I'm not hiring lefties. That's not how this works. I'm sorry. And that is not discrimination. Intervention section 902 is amended. Gender identity. Miscellaneous. Let's see. And definitions and rules. Miscellaneous title uh, 11 of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 is amended by redesignated sections 1101 through 1104 and all this other minutia and garbage by inserting the uh, uh, after the title heading the following. They're putting in new definitions and new rules. OK, this is going to be the definitions and rules. OK, listen, definitions in title two, three. Uh, what is that? Four, six, seven, and I always mess these up. Is that 11? I think that's 11 or not. I always mess up Roman numerals. All right. I'm not perfect. I'm not the smartest guy in the room. Race, color, religion, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, national origin. But, and nobody's arguing. You shouldn't be discriminated against for national. Like, listen, if you were like born in Iran and you came over here as a kid and you're a freaking blue blooded or, you know, red blooded American working hard. I don't. Cool. Rock and roll. Welcome. But when they talk, talk about national origin, they're talking about the illegal immigrants that uh, Biden wants to, uh, you know, give all of our jobs to. Race, color, religion, sex, sexual orientation. All right. Gender identity, no. National ori ori origin, sure. The term race, color, religion, sex, gender identity, national origin, they're used with respect to an individual, and this is what it includes. A, the race, color, religion, sex, including orientation and identity or national origin, respectively, of another person whom the individual is associated or has been associated and a perception or belief, even if inaccurate, concerning the race, color, religion, sex, including orientation or gender identity or national origin, respectively, of the individual. All right. Again, gender identity, gender identity here. They define it. OK, they define it. The term gender identity means the gender related identity, appearance, mannerisms or other gender related characteristics related. All right. Of an, or sorry, uh, 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 of an individual, regardless of the individual's designated sex as birth or uh, 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 sex at birth. They're not talking about male and female. They're not. There is no mention of male or female here because gender to them is a concept. It's a construct. It doesn't exist. So again, I could say that this mouse for this computer is its own gender and mouse. Now computer mouse is a gender. And I click that clicking on my, that's me clicking my mouse. I do that all day. Now you have to respect that now. This is a ridiculous, ridiculous amendment. It really is gender identity. The term gender identity means the gender related identity, appearance, mannerisms and uh, or other gender related characteristics of an individual, regardless of the individual's designated sex at birth. It's not a designated sex at birth. It's science. It is your gender. It's your actual gender. If you are born a male with balls and a dick, you are a male. If you don't feel like a male and you identify as something else, you have chosen to do that. But you were born certain way with certain anatomy. And until you prove science wrong, I don't believe you. I don't agree with you. I believe in science and you are a fraud. You're a fraud. 
All right. That is not discrimination. That is a fact, including the term including, but not limited to consistent with the term standard meaning in federal law sex. The term sex includes a sex stereotype. All right. Pregnancy, childbirth or a related medical condition. All right. Sexual orientation or gender identity, gender identity. There's the problem again. Sex characteristics, including intersex traits. Sexual orientation, the term sexual orientation means homosexuality, heterosexuality, or bisexuality, right? We've accepted that people in our society exist in this way. Nobody is arguing with sexual orientation. Nobody is, right? If, if nobody is saying if I'm a male, female, if, if I'm gay, straight, right? They're, whether it's their gender uh, identity, which is a false premise, right? That's the problem. But the truth the truth is that, again, sexual orientation, we've accepted a lot of this, right? There are staunch, very, very conservative folks that don't agree with it. But whether they agree with it or not, these people exist and these people are allowed to have their life and be happy in the world. Plain and simple. The problem we have, again, for the most part is with gender identity. When you get to claim you're whatever the hell you want to be, whenever you want to be it. All right. There's no set definition. You might, again, say my pineapple reference, my microphone reference, my mouse reference. You might might say it's ridiculous, but if you don't actually define it with a sex or a gender, right? What is it? It could be anything. And this isn't a real definition. All right. It's not rules in a covered title referred to in subsection a one with respect to sex, pregnancy, childbirth, or related medical conditions shall not receive less favorable treatment than other physical conditions. All right. Nothing wrong with that. Nobody wants to discriminate against pregnancy or childbirth Two, with respect to gender identity. An individual shall not be denied. Here you go. Shall not be denied access to a shared facility, including a restroom, a locker room, and a dressing room that is in accordance with the individual's gender identity. Your children cannot play sports in school without, uh, on the women's volleyball team now, without seeing a swinging dick, and that's okay. That's supposed to be okay. Our society is being drastically ripped in a different direction with this bill. That is not okay. That is not okay. If you have children and you're okay with your little children being in locker rooms and bathrooms with uh, other naked children of, of opposite sex and teaching them that they're on the same freaking team and they're a woman and not a guy, even though they look like a, or vice or whatever it is, you're confusing and screwing up kids. All right. Plain and simple, plain and simple. It doesn't work like that. They're saying here, listen, no individual shall be denied access to a shared facility, including a restroom, a locker room and a dressing room. And that's in accordance with the individual's gender identity. Listen, that means that I can now go in the bar. Right. I can go to the bar and wait till the hot chick goes in the bathroom and I can go take a shit in the stall next to her. Because I'm a lady tonight, baby. Wednesday's ladies night at the club. Guys, this is a problem. This is a problem. You really think that gender identity is not a problem? Then you shouldn't be in the United States. You should leave the country. Rules of construction, nothing in Section 1101 or the provisions of a covered title incorporating a term defined or a rule specified in that section shall be construed to limit the protection against an unlawful practice on the basis of pregnancy, child, birth, or related medical condition. Again, again, guys, right? They talk about pregnancy. They talk about childbirth. This is how they lump it all together, right? That's not bad. Nobody should be discriminated for pregnancy or childbirth. You'd be out of your mind. You'd be out of your mind for saying that. But then right there, also, uh, guys can now go in women's restrooms because they identify as a woman. Sorry. That's just thrown in there. It's just like thrown right under there. Women should not have pregnancy discriminated against. Hell yeah, don't discriminate against women. And then also, while you're giving birth, if the nurse that you requested to be a female is a male but identifies as a female, you have no choice. And they have to look at your cha-cha and your baby coming out of it. You don't get a choice because that would make you racist and discriminatory now, wouldn't it, according to this bill? folks? It's a very, very, very deep pit that this digs, all right? If you're still listening after, what, an hour and 10 minutes or so, 
then you're finally starting to see what I'm saying if you were a lefty, or you just hate me, or you love me and you're just here because you like to hear my beautiful voice. But I'm being honest with you. This is some sick stuff. All right. And not the whole thing, not the blanket thing. There's some good stuff in here, right? We shouldn't discriminate necessarily against orientation in a lot of ways, right? And I said that a lot of times above as well, right? That a lot of people agree that that's not too big of a deal, right? But there are certain people based on their religious beliefs that that should be allowed to make decisions based on who and what they do. Plain and simple. Not everybody agrees on this. That's not how this works just because a bunch of kids in colleges decided to shove it up your butt and you decided it was a good political freaking strategy to use. Sorry, we're not going to take it, even though, by the way, this is already passed in the House. It's going to get voted in the Senate. Most likely it'll get thrown out of the Senate, but God forbid it passes. God help us all, ladies and gentlemen. God help us all. Again, gender identity, gender identity, gender identity, all thrown in under pregnancy and childbirth and everything like that to make you think it's not a big deal. The Religious Religious Freedom Restoration Act of 93 shall not provide a claim concerning or defense to a claim covered under this title or provide a basis for challenging the application or enforcement of a covered title, which means that the Religious Freedom Act, right, what they're saying is that that doesn't apply anymore to sexual orientation or gender identity. All right. So if you are a orthodox anything, bye bye to your business being in accordance to your religion. Housing, Fair Housing Act is amended to say gender identity. Everything is gender identity, gender identity, gender identity, 804, 805, 806, 808, gender identity, gender identity, gender identity, gender identity. Rules of construction, 1101, 1106, 1964, blah, 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 gender identity all the way down. Prevention of intimidation in fair housing cases, section 901 of the Civil Rights Act of 1968 is amended by inserting, including gender identity, baby, equal credit opportunity, prohibited discrimination, gender identity. All right. You basically, by putting this through, they legalize, they completely legalize woke culture. All right. Woke culture takes over our country. If this passes, if this amendment is made and this act becomes a thing, plain and simple, that's what it is. This is the takeover. This is the play. This is the hostile takeover. They were hoping to God they would win more in the House and the Senate, hoping to God so that this would go through. They didn't, thank God. So we may be able to push this off even further. All right. But again, this destroys people in this country to make way for their own created culture based upon political and power gain for the leftist elites. That's who drafted this bill, again, or drafted this amendment, uh, uh, or this act, I guess, with a bunch of amendments in it, excuse me. Sorry, it's hot in here. I got studio lights on me. This is frustrating as hell. So look, again, everything down the line, gender identity, gender identity, the term race, color, religion, national origin, sex, gender identity, gender identity. The race, color, religion, national origin, origin, sex, more gender identity, or a prescription, a perception, excuse me, or belief, even if inaccurate, gender identity, adding the following. It's all changing. It's all being thrown in gender identity. Things with juries right here, section uh, 1862, 1867, 1869, gender identity, gender identity, gender identity, sex, 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 gender identity, gender identity, gender identity. It's all about gender identity. Technical and conforming amendment, Title 28, United States Code, is amended by adding the end at the following 1879 rules of construction and claims passed the House of Representatives May 17th, 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, if this becomes real, if this becomes a thing, They will destroy this country as we know it. Listen, I assure you, I assure you this is a problem. I assure you this is happening right now. I assure you of it. It says May 17th, 2019, but that was going through. This had to get drafted. This got drafted the other year, but now it's gone through. It's passed. It's going. It's heading through. All right. Trust me. This is on the table. 
you could lose your job for not believing in this. If you're a doctor, you could use, lose your license for not agreeing with the fake science. All right. If you, uh, if you're a woman and you're on sports team sports, you're going to lose every time guys, individual too. individual sports is going to be even worse. Look, I could talk about it. I could come up with things off the top of my head, but I saw here from the Heritage Foundation, another article that was really good. All right. You read the act. We went through it. It was pretty dry. All right. But over here, the Heritage Foundation explains how this affects you. They do a much better job than me. And I'd like to read it and talk about it with you as well. Just like we went through the uh, text for HR5. All right. It's... It's a screwed up place to be because they word it in such a way that no matter what you say, it makes you look bad. Right. And that's how the left likes to work. All right. That's how they like to work. All right. It just is what it is. Sadly. All right. I want to just go down in here. There's all kinds of people this affects parents and children, medical professionals, employers and workers. The Equality Act would force employers and workers to conform to new sexual norms or else lose their businesses and jobs. But the section that's important to me to read to you is women. I want to reach out to women out there. I want to talk to you about what H.R. 5 is going to do to you, what your future looks like under H.R. 5. Women. The Equality Act would ultimately lead to the erasure of women by dismantling sex-specific facilities, sports, and other female-only spaces. Remember, transgenders and, and uh, people with gender identities, the people who get to believe and be whatever identity they want to believe, they cannot, right, they cannot be told that they cannot use a facility for which they identify. So if you go to Curves, for example, the all women gym, and I, a big 240 pound man, say I identify as a woman, I get to be on the cycle next to you and you don't get to feel comfortable in your weight loss journey, uh, journey anymore. It doesn't matter, women. You become second class citizens with these bills. You become second class citizens and get replaced with transgenders and uh, and and uh, gender identity folks. Plain and simple. All right. There's no actual equality here. Somebody has to get hurt for somebody else to benefit, and it's women. All right. Sexual orientation and gender identity laws that open up sex specific facilities like bathrooms, locker rooms, etc. to members of opposite sex enable sexual assault. That's proven. For example, Pasha Thomas was forced to remove her child from school after a male classmate assaulted her five year old daughter in the girl's restroom. The boy had access to the girl's restroom because the school policy granted students access to private facilities on the basis of self identify gender identity. How does a child get to make that decision? What is wrong with you if you allow your child to make that decision? What is wrong with you? You're not a parent. You're a buddy. You're an enabling piece of crap buddy, and your child should be taken from you. Plain and simple, your child should be taken from you. Administrators refuse to change the policy despite Thomas's complaints. Federal authorities are apparently investigating the incident. The concern with these policies is that predators will take advantage of the law to gain access to victims. Policies like these make women less likely to report incidents and law enforcement less likely to get involved for fear of being accused of discrimination, folks. These policies also leave women at a disadvantage in sex-specific sports and other activities. Two biological males who identify and compete as women easily took first and second place at the Connecticut State Track Championships. Uh, Selena Soul, a female runner, lost the race and the chance to be scouted by college coaches and selected for athletic scholarships. Her future was flushed down the toilet because of these two dudes that identified as women. Why is that okay? And why are women voting for this? We all know the outcome of the race before it even starts, she said. It's demoralizing. You know, women are going to wake up in the suburbs, or, you know, especially wealthy women who, who voted for Biden and all of these policies who are low information voters, and they're going to wake up one day with no rights. And they're going to somehow try to blame it on the right until they realize the dark truth. And by then it's going to be way too late. We can't let this happen. We have to protect women in this country. We have to. Females of all ages can expect to lose more and more opportunities like these to biological males who have a natural advantage in sports and physical activities. You cannot say that we don't. 
We do have an advantage because of testosterone. It's chemicals. It's biology. That's what it is. All right? Plain and simple. It's not an idea or a thought or a construct or fairy dust. It's the truth. And this isn't a war against uh, 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 something with real substance behind it. This is a war against the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, the Equality Act would defeat the entire purpose of Title uh, 11, which was meant. Is that 11 or is it an I before? Because I always I remember if it's an X is 10. Right. And if it's an I after it. Right. I have to check now. It's driving me crazy. Let me see. I X Roman numeral. See, I don't know everything. I'm just like you. I'm not perfect. All right. Let's see what I X is really Roman number converter. All right. How about this? We'll just I X convert. It's nine. I kept saying 11. Okay. It's nine. Excuse me. I'm an idiot. It's nine. Title nine, which was meant to ensure that women would have the same opportunities as men, including in sports, which would leave women vulnerable to sexual assault, which is true. And it happens. And it happens, guys. All right. There are so many people that this affects so many people. You don't even think about it. Look, after the Colorado Civil Rights Commission found probable cause that Phillips had discriminated on the basis of gender identity, he sued the commission for targeting him for Christian beliefs. Ultimately, the commission dropped the case and Phillips agreed to drop his own lawsuit against the agency. This was because of a guy named Jack Phillips, right? The most high profile example uh, of uh, of these cases all right. And we're talking about uh, an act that would make people suffer and lose their jobs. Right. Because they didn't believe in these things. Colorado Baker, Jack Phillips. We all know this. He made the same sex. Uh, he didn't want to make the same sex wedding cake because of his religion. It's his religious right to believe that. Right. They came after him with a vengeance, came after him with a vengeance. All right. The Supreme Court found him. All right. To be in his bio, in his right to believe what he believed. They found him to be right. All right. They did. They did. But he then found himself in court again uh, after an activist attorney who identifies as transgender requested the masterpiece cake shop, create a gender transition celebration cake. See, they, they, they're baiting people. They're going after people. This is a transgender lawyer who knew what happened with his Supreme Court case, right, with the same-sex wedding king, and intentionally went to him with the purpose of baiting him into another case. You see where I'm coming from? All right, that is volatile. That is attacking. That is a form of violence. That is persecutory, ladies and gentlemen. That's retaliation. That's unethical. But the left is all about being unethical. There, there's all kinds of these different things that we could read and go through, but you've heard them all. You've heard them all again and again and again and again. All right. A federal sexual orientation and gender identity law would empower the government to interfere in how regular Americans think, speak and act at home, at school, at work and at play. And any bill promoting such authoritarianism is a danger to our freedoms. I agree 100 percent. The idea of gender identity is a concept, an idea, a theory with no actual definition, with no actual amount of genders, with no actual grounding in science, and is a, 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 an abomination, an absolute abomination to the American way of life, which is why the left wants to destroy the American way of life. Because in our true American system, in our true constitutional system, this cannot exist. It can't. All right. So now that we're all heated, now that we're all pissed, now that we're all mad that this is happening, we're fired up and we're going to pressure our, 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 our elected officials to fight against things like this, we're going to have a laugh. And why are we going to have a laugh? Because we need to have a laugh. Because this stuff is stressful. It's mind boggling. It's painful to think about. It makes you want to bash your head against the wall a hundred times because you can't understand why so many people have gone insane. People are out of their minds right now. But that's her, right, ladies and gentlemen, because we have the Babylon B to make it all better. All right. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The Babylon B is going to do what I just did for you in an hour and a half in five or 10 minutes, and they're going to do it so much better. I do it so much better than me because they are hilarious. I love the Babylon B. I don't know if you do. Uh, they're not, I don't 
they don't, I don't make money off them. They don't sponsor me or anything. I just find them funny. And I think that once in a while I need to include them in my shows, add a little levity at the end. So guys, without further ado, the B is going to explain. All right. The Equality Act, ladies and gentlemen, what is this Equality Act that you've been hearing about? Is it the end of liberty as we know it? Is it a brave and bold step forward for human rights? Will it help you save money? On your, on your car insurance or anything else? Some of these questions will be answered in our handy explainer. I love this. What is the Equality Act, all right? This is coming from the Babylon Bee, folks. H.R. 5, passed by the House this week, would implement special rights for a very small percentage of the population in exchange for a very small cost. Just the rights of every woman in the entire country. What a great deal. Is President Biden likely to sign it if it passes the Senate? Of course he is. Yes. Though he'll probably be asleep at the time while Kamala operates his hand like a puppeteer. Oh, what would this mean for religious institutions? Oh, you're a bigot. You're so racist. How could you even ask that question, you racist? You believe in God? You're a bigot just for believing in God. You're evil. You're evil. That is the left. All right? Plain and simple. What does this mean for women? Well, you really are a bigot. You're such a bigot, aren't you? Shouldn't someone notify your employer of your radical views? Shouldn't you be fired for going against the status quo? Who are some opponents of this bill? Biology? Natural law and uh, 6,000 years of human history. That's the opponents of the bill. All right. Actual science, because the bill is garbage. Who are some of the proponents of the bill? Well, some very fine, upstanding individuals, including virtually all Democrats, the most obnoxious people on Twitter, and the very worst, most self righteous celebrities in the world. And oh, yeah, of course, uh, Satan. Satan really loves uh, equality. He really loves equality, at least the Democrat version of equality. Will the Supreme Court strike it down? Probably. If Biden doesn't appoint 1,700 new transgender judges to the court before the case is heard, which, if we're being honest, <laughs> is pretty likely. <laughs> it's likely that... <laughs> It's a, the Babylon B says that uh, if Biden doesn't appoint 1,700 new gen transgender judges before, you know, the case is heard by the court, but it's likely he will. He's going to go find the 1,700 transgender judges. So get used to introducing yourself with your pronouns. <laughs> My pronoun today is shmerm. Hi, I'm shmerm. I'm shmerming. Should I be worried? No, dummy. You're a Christian who believes in God, that believes God's in control. So don't sweat it. But if you're not a, a Christian, worry hard uh, 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 and worry often and pray to accept Christ as the worship band plays this chorus of softly and tenderly one last time. Look, I'm just reading off the Babylon on B, right? I was born a Jew. I have a personal relationship with God. I don't discriminate. If that is your belief, then you go ahead and believe in it. Rock and roll. I believe in religious freedom in this country. 110%. What I don't believe in is the right of somebody to say that they're a freaking porcupine and then glue spikes to their back and then expect that the, the, the boss is going to be okay with it. All right. I've been making a ton of exaggerations, obviously. Okay. I'm doing it to bring levity to it. All right. I'm doing it to poke fun at the whole thing. I obviously know what the hell they're talking about, but I'm bringing a light upon a point that there is no telling how far this goes because there's no actual definition set in any reality that we actually live in. So Babylon B, thank you for being very funny. You are. All right. What does this mean for women? You're a bigot for asking. That's so funny. I love the Babylon B. They're really good guys. This is no joke. This is some horrible stuff, man. All right. There's nothing against people living their life and pursuing their happiness whatever that means, whatever their sexual orientation, whatever, but you can't just go changing an entire society because a small portion of people, all right, a small portion of people have gone insane and believe that they can be whatever they want on any given day because of how their feelings make them feel inside. This world is not based in feelings. It's based in facts. All right. This world is based on hard work, hard labor. And that's why the left woke movement tries to destroy it. What do they say about hard work, hard labor, about 
working together, bringing teams together, about forming families, about forming community. What do they say about? They say it's all racist, white witchcraft. It's a witchcraft by the white devil. The white devil. That is what they say. And you know what happens, though, if you destroy all that? You know what happens if you get rid of the nuclear family, if you get rid of hard work, if you get rid of motivation, if you you have a bunch of slaves, the 350 million of them for the government to do with whatever they please. And then you now have the communist United States of America. Guys, this doesn't go anywhere good. All right. This isn't about equality. It's not about gays and lesbians. and trans. It's not about any of that. It's about fundamentally breaking the peasants in this country so that the high elites can still continue their fantasy forward, folks. It's about bringing forward the socialist utopia so that the ruling class can rule and never worry about the peasants again. Folks, the door has been cracked open. And we have our foot in the door, a boot in the door, and we're trying to hold it open. And the left is doing everything they can, including this, to try to slam it in our face so we never, ever catch a glimpse or have a bridge into their world again. Folks, I don't know if you've been paying attention to CPAC, but I highly doubt that the left's plan is going to go the way that they expected it to. So, folks, I really hope you liked this episode. All right. This is important to get out. It's long. It's dry. We tried to add a little humor. I tried to be, you know, open and straightforward about everything. There's not really many edits in this one. I'm giving you the the straight truth from the heart, guys, the straight truth from the heart. All right. And there are going to be people that hate this. There are going to be people that say a lot of bad things about me. But you know what? I learned one thing once upon a time by uh, uh, being involved slightly for a short period of my life in the pro wrestling business. And I learned that any heat is good heat. So if you want to hate Please, baby, come hate. You're only going to make me bigger and badder than ever before. So with that being said, folks, come check me out on Parlor at the James Lane. Come check us out on Gab, uh, American underscore Reveille. Everywhere else, American underscore Reveille, including Rumble, including Odyssey, including Gab TV. All right, guys, I'm on Mines, American underscore Reveille. You can still find me on some of the other social media, but I don't post very much because they're still blackballing, censoring, and shadow banning me. All right, guys, my stuff is getting barely a uh, hundred views on YouTube when it was getting thousands the month before. And it's not because the quality has changed. Nothing has changed at all. Um, it's because of the shadow ban. And I can prove it with analytics. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it all rests on you. I need your support, ladies and gentlemen. I can't do this without you. I couldn't do it without you. And now... This has become a reality. This has become a big thing, and it's growing and growing and growing. We got a lot of great stuff on the way for the street team. Folks, I know my emails are backed up, all right? I'm backed up days. I'm backed up days because I'm helping build the rest of the new website on the back end, and I'm helping do a lot of other stuff, including put together the street team materials, which has taken a lot of time, including going to school, being in a family, doing all this stuff, being a father, all this stuff, working full time for my day job to support the company. It's a lot of stuff that goes into it. But guys, we'll get it together. We'll get it through. All right. We will push forward. We will. And we will grow and grow and grow. So just do me a favor, like I've been asking, do me a favor, share this. Let everybody know about the American Reveille podcast, all right? Share, share, share and share, folks, however you have to, whenever you can, all right? This company will grow, will become a media company that envelops the nation. And if I have anything to do with it, I will personally grab the narrative by the horns. I will personally pick up the Titanic and I will steer it right in the other direction. All right. Just help me get there, guys. Lift me up. Lift this company up for us. Lift it up. And I will take care of you in dividends. I promise. All right, guys. Uh, and not financial dividends. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is dividends of effort. I'm going to put everything in my being to doing my part in bringing this country back to balance, ladies and gentlemen. And with that, I hope you enjoyed episode 80 of the American Re uh, Reveille podcast, guys, and I will see you next time. All right. Bye.